All right. Um, God bless everyone. Uh, welcome to the Urban Moms uh, public reading of the devotional. The devotional is called the Urban Moms Devotional uh, from one mom to another. And we're really excited that you'll be with us. My name is Pastor Ephraim Alisea. And um, I, I just, I'm the pastor of Elements Church. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the ladies who uh, participated with us. It has been a joy reading uh, the, the things uh, over time and, and getting, getting to know some of you. I'm really excited for the, for, the, for the people to get to meet you. So I'm gonna talk a lot less. Actually, I think this is the last time you, you'll hear me talking, um, but I'm, I'm just excited uh, for what God has done already and is going to do. So I'm gonna pass it over to our moderator our, um, and our curator, uh, Sheena Palmer, here she is. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for tuning in with us. Elements Church, thanks you for your support. And I thank the Elements Church for the support um, with this project, which was the wellspring of God just pouring into me and into E and into um, Erica and the rest of these ladies, you know, as, as mamas. <laughs> and um, I first want to open up with a word of prayer. So can we just get our hearts and minds ready? God, we thank you for pulling us together and, and being able to work in the several different vineyards in, in the blessed way that you have given us. We each have different attributes, different ways of being mom, because that's how you made us, God. God, you've really um, showed us that from one mother to another, that our voices will be received, God, so that they can help the next mom, at, just as moms before us have helped us as well. And we pray that this actually opens up many more doors to motherhood, many more doors to being a Christian mama. And we thank you, Father, for your direction in all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So um, our first reader is Eleanor Johnson, and we would like to pass that over to you. You have to unmute, Mom. Good evening, Pastor Alisea and Moms. I guess I'm the only grandmother on this here panel. My name is Eleanor Johnson. I'm a member of Union Baptist Church, and I've been a member since 1970. And I'm also a grandmother of six. And I am so happy that I was able to give my testimony in this panel this evening. I never talk about certain things. I'm very much um, a person that you know, stays to herself, but this has opened me up and I hope to share my story and hopefully it will benefit the moms that are on the panel. Again, um, I would like to read from Psalms 27 verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. And I chose this um, chapter. It stuck with me most of my life. After the death of my mother at the age of 11. There were people that loved me, but no one loves you like a good mother. A good mother will lift you up, instill in your confidence, tell you you're beautiful, hug you to make you feel safe, and above all, teach you the word of God. And that's what my mom had done. My mother tried to live as God taught and showed us how to live. I became an introvert after her death. I didn't feel love. I became a hollow shell, living on the periphery of life's events. Some mornings when I woke, I could not lift my body. When I tried to lift my head up, it felt like a weight was pushing me down on my shoulders. And that's when I started reciting Psalms 27 over and over again, 
until I was able to lift my head up. Only through the grace of God am I alive today. I praise his holy name. As a teenager, I studied hard because my mother stressed education. It was difficult to focus because I was stressed with the reality of life's, the hard knocks, different experiences that I held to. Being ashamed of wearing hand-me-downs from people I didn't even know. Feeling not loved, feeling not beautiful, not popular, being lied on, cheated on, and always taking a back seat when I'm in the public. And one day I said to myself, this is what the devil wants. I began reading the Bible, different verses, reading Psalms 27 continuously to get my, just to get me going through the day and listening to sermons in my car radio when I was going to work. I was a mother then. When I became a mother, I needed to get focused. I need to take care of my children. I started with Psalms 25, then Psalms 27. I read over and over again until I memorized them. Then I started adding different other verses in the mornings as I would prepare to my day. After a while, I started reading the entire chapter over and over again. Verse 10, let me know I am not alone. The Lord did not forsake me. I started feeling protected, loved, more confident and assured. I believe God loved me, so I should start to love myself. And that's how I've been operating for the past maybe 15 years. And I thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you for sharing. And um, wow, <laughs> that was such a testimony. I, I truly, I'm, I'm humbled by that. Um, not only can we, can we learn from that, we can, we can feel how you feel in a sense of this world of wanting to always belong. So our next mama is Ampi. Well, Amparo Cruz, we like to call her Ampi. So without further ado, Ampi. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. I'm probably the newest mom of the group. Um, <laughs> my baby girl's only eight months. Um, just honored to be here and thank you for your testimony as well. I am a member of Elements Church I want to say since 2012, coming upon some time now. Um, I love my church members, and I want to thank you, Sheena, Pastor Efren, and Erica, and everyone a part of the um, panel today for involving me in it. And it's just something that I hope will feed mothers and parents to come. And I'm going to read from James 1, chapters 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. I try to keep that on my mind always, as I can become doubtful, forgetful, and worry a lot. As a new mom during a pandemic, Times have been more than uncertain. Times have become frightening, disheartening, confusing, and downright hopeless. But God is bigger than my fleeting emotions. From the beginning of my pregnancy, I experienced hard times. I didn't have a simple and enjoyable pregnancy. That continued right into my celebration of our baby shower at the height of a shutdown quarantine and right on into my labor where I wasn't certain my child's father would be allowed to be present 
but God kept me. I broke down many times in tears and prayed earnestly that I'd come through it all triumphantly. But the most important part was that I also thank God for his perseverance and presence, even if I didn't get the outcome I prayed for. Hmm, I didn't think this would bring emotion. <laughs> I often try to control the outcome of things and try my best to have a perfect life and that gets overwhelming. I often have to remember, I am not in control, God is. I often have to stop and be thankful for the simplest things, even the trials that come my way as they give me strength and persistence to push through. Every day will not be perfect. Every moment will not be joyous, but God, but as God said, believe and keep the faith. I may not always understand his word, but when I don't, I seek his wisdom. I may not always feel victorious, but when I don't, I count it all joy, for I know God has always and will always take care of me. Think on these things when sad, scared, or indifferent. Good times can get us caught up in joy, and that's wonderful, but bad times can do just the same. So when you find yourself wondering what to do, seek God's wisdom and remember he will take care of you. Always think on those things. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Amparo. <laughs> the new mom. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. I won't get emotional either. <laughs> um, our next reader is Kina. And Kina, oh my goodness, when I read yours as well, I mean, so, so emotional. Um, so without further ado, further ado, <laughs> um, Kina Rosa, Ventura Rosas from LMH Church. <laughs> Thank you, Sheena. And um, I really am so excited to be part of this. Um, again, my name is Kina Ventura Rosas. I am a happy mom here in the Bronx to a, an almost 12 year old um, who drives me crazy, but she's the joy of my life, such as the life of a mom. Um, and I've been a member of Elements Church, I'm going to say since probably around 2015, maybe before, but um, and the scripture that I, I share for this devotional comes from Psalm 139, verses 13 to 14. Um, and this is from the NIV versions. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Um, the scripture um, is something I say over and over all the time in my life. Um, anxiety will often tell you such negative things about yourself in your head, even before the world does. And so I repeat this to remember who I am um, and, and who I come from, from the Almighty. Since childhood, I have these words as a stinging phrase in my mind. You'll never be good enough. Having suffered through mental and physical abuse until 12, I believed these words wholeheartedly. High school, relationships, and college failures engraved those words further. Although raised Catholic and also as a youth minister, I often felt like a sham, constantly encouraging others but feeling worthless. After my divorce, I felt like I didn't deserve to sit in the same pews as everyone else. Isolation is the work of the enemy. As a woman approaching midlife with an ever growing daughter, a failed marriage and lots of baggage, I am grateful for my church, Elements Church in the Bronx. It was at Elements that God redirected my life just a few short years ago. The scripture of my adulthood now comes again from Psalm 139, and I will read it again. For you created my inmost being. 
You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. While I still battle with mental health and the stinging words of my childhood, the thing about words is that they often do define us, whether we realize them or not. The most important thing for me to remember is that God's word is the ultimate definition of my worth. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made despite our mistakes and detours. It is in him that we can discover our true worth. Thank you. Amen, amen to that. Oh my goodness. Um, as moms, we doubt ourselves, but be, even before we became moms, it's like we add that doubt on top. So that's where that one hit me, you know? Um, and <laughs> from that doubt, we have to be able to trust, right? So I think Elizabeth is gonna help us understand what that's like. Elizabeth Rodriguez, it's your turn. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Elizabeth Rodriguez and I'm a member of Elements Church and I've been a member since 2009. Um, this particular ministry project was uh, dear to me because there have been numerous devotionals at, that have encouraged me and blessed me in such a way and edified me so I, I felt honored to be able to write a devotional that hopefully will do the same for others, especially being a mom. So um, my devotional scripture is Hebrews 2.13. And it says, I will put my trust in him. That is I and the children God has given me. And the scripture is very dear to me, being a mom of two children who God blessed me with biologically and two children that we have had the honor to raise, um, two additional children that we had the honor to raise. When I found out I was pregnant with my first child, I had a steady stream of doubts, questions, and thoughts. Will I be a good mother? How do I raise a child who grows up to be a confident, well-rounded individual? I am not going to make the mistakes my parents made. And the list goes on and on. On some days, I get it right. On other days, I feel miserably at motherhood. These are the days I don't take the time to go to our Heavenly Father before I get annoyed, frustrated, overwhelmed, and before I discipline. In Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 9, we read, place these words on your hearts. Get them deep inside you. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Teach them to your children. The closer I am to God, the better I parent. Psalm 74, 78, 4 directs us not to hide these truths from our children. Your children will grow up and take their place in this world. It is up to you to teach them what a relationship with God looks like and trust God to allow his truth to direct their path. Motherhood will have its challenges. God's word provides the guidance, answers, strength, wisdom we all need as mothers to raise our children. Like in Hebrews 2.13, put your trust in him and your children will grow to do the same. And I pray that this blesses you and it encourages you to truly trust in him and and trust your children to him amen Oof. i see all the tears <laughs> we're all crying so i know on live um where you're watching um and later on on youtube you will feel this as well as a mama it's not easy um our next reader of the night um, will be Erica Alicea. And oh my goodness. So Erica, um, it's your turn. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> love you too. Hey everyone. 
So as Sheena said, my name is Erica and I am a leader at Elements Church. Um, I have an 11 year old daughter and it is such um, an honor to be part of this, Sheena. I thank you so much for listening to the Holy Spirit's voice to do this and to include these other voices because I'm just, um, I'm just so encouraged already. <laughs> And um, I, I share a lot on my, on, uh, on my blog. I'm a homeschooling mom and I, and I talk about how my homeschooling journey and I talk about my motherhood journey. And so today what I wanna share with you is a little bit of, of a word that, that God has given to me. It's obvious why the heart's considered a vital organ. One we cannot live without, one God strategically placed in the center to be protected, guarded, by our rib cage. So what about protecting your heart spiritually? Here's what the Bible says. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4.23. Mama, your heart is the essence of who you are, your authentic self, the very core of your being. It is so much more than just your emotions. It's where all your dreams, your desires, and your passions live. It's that part of you that connects with God and with others, especially your children. Just like your heart sends blood around your body with the oxygen and nutrient it needs, your spiritual heart overflows into thoughts, words, and actions. Remember, everything flows from it. You have to guard your heart from Satan and from others who don't value you but the number one culprit you need to defend your heart from is yourself. The world tells you to follow your heart. The problem is that your heart is naturally sinful. It wants to do what it wants to do and it can easily deceive you. Your heart can take you to some really funky places. Fear can overtake you. Anxiety can cripple you. Unforgiveness can sicken you, anger can alienate you, shame can silence you, love can blind you. The emotional state of your heart affects who you are as a person and as a mother. Those feelings are made evident in what you speak, how you carry yourself and the decisions you make. If you're not careful, before you know it, you're speaking your own truth. The truth according to you brought on by a deceitful heart. So how do you guard your heart? Your protection is in the word of God. Reading his word builds up dedication. Studying his word builds up understanding. Obeying his word builds a hedge of protection around your heart, protecting you from sin, the enemy schemes, and from yourself. It is through both the Bible and prayer that the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. When you surrender to God, the Holy Spirit becomes like the valve of your physical heart. He's literally your heartbeat. He lets in what needs to be there and keeps it from going backward. He tells you who you should be letting into your heart and who you should be keeping out. Mama, let today be the day you guard your heart and in turn guard the hearts of those you've been called to protect. In doing so, you model a Christ-centered life that is essential as your kids are living in a self-centered culture that wants to influence and mold their young hearts. You can't tell them to guard their hearts if you don't guard your own. They're looking, they're observing, they're drinking from your spirit. What are you pouring into their hearts? How are you addressing them? Their hearts belong to their creator and he's giving you the honor of guarding them until they're old enough to guard their own. God bless you. So every time I read that one, I'm reminded <laughs> of how important it is that we are good stewards of our own hearts and then good stewards of the hearts of our children, even by the smallest little things that we say to them. Um, encouraging them in their gifts that God's given them and 
allowing them to find their way. And as a homeschooling mom, um, thank you so much, Erica. And as my leader, thank you even more. <laughs> um, our next reader is, oh my goodness, Burkia Lamise. And I've been looking forward to this, Burkia. Um, I really have, and I can't wait. So without further ado, Burkia. Good evening, everybody. I'm Verkia Lanise, and I am a member of the Union Baptist Church where the Reverend Brian D. Scott is my pastor. Um, I've been a part of Union since I was in the womb, <laughs> um, but I actually was baptized in 1991. So I've been an um, official member for very many years. Um, my scripture is Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Easing anxiety in prayer. This scripture was one I had heard on so many occasions, but I did not know what it would mean to me in my adulthood. After two miscarriages and a stillborn, I was pregnant again. Too afraid to get excited about this baby I was carrying, concerned it would end in tragedy again. All I could think, God, please let this be it. Worry, worrying that I would not be able to carry this baby to term, I would go on many doctor's appointments in prayer. Not only did I have to see my OB, but a rheumatologist and pediatric cardiologist. Having chronic illness is anxiety provoking enough when having to go to doctor's appointments. But now every appointment, I would wait to hear the heartbeat of my baby and would sigh in relief after every appointment. God is never far away, even when it feels like it. He is always blessing us, even in small ways. Keep communication with him through prayer. My five-year-old Caden is a continuous reminder of God's blessings and miracles. If we lean on him in the hard times, he will carry us through. I remember this every time the storms of life come. It is my reference point to know God is behind the scenes working things out for my good. My father, Father God, you know the concerns of our heart. Allow us to come to you when we fret over the situations of life. Allow us to be thankful in all things. Allow us to speak to you about our concerns and lean on you through prayer, meditation, and by reading your word. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, a very identifiable story that almost is taboo in Christian church at times. Um, that anxiety you receive when waiting for the heartbeat, when waiting for your child to be born. So mama, remember to lean on God, right? Lean on him, trust him, trust his way. Um, Marina from Elements Church is next. <laughs> Go ahead, Maria. I, I just, I'm, I love Marina. <laughs> just, yes, just take it away. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marina Mason. I am a minister and a leader here at Elements Church. I've been a member for about five years now. I think 2015, my husband Randy and I joined Elements Church and our lives have never been the same. Um, a few months ago when Sheena reached a few months ago when Sheena reached out to me to ask me to uh, contribute to this special project, um, an urban mother's devotional. Uh, I'll be honest, I felt like it was during a big shift in my life, the pandemic, uh, adjusting to school at home. You know, I am a mother of six and life was definitely stretching me at the time. And I felt like I was on E, I was empty and I absolutely felt like it was an honor. So I said, yes, I will. <laughs> so I prayed about uh, what I might say. And the Lord gave me a word and he gave me a little sweet poem that I think I'll read to you after, after I share. 
So the scripture I'll start with is 2 Corinthians 9, 10, and it's from the NIV. And it says, he who supplies seed to the shower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Give me a minute, just a second, in a little while, maybe later. These are all just a few phrases I've said repeatedly to my children and sadly at times without any eye contact as I responded to emails and texts and Zoom calls. Patience is a virtue and it is a fruit that I long for, that I am always reaching for. I am realizing now more than ever that the fruit of patience has a need for rain and sun drops in rain and sunshine of rays that come in a different way than the way we might suppose. In this season, the rain and rays of sun are landing upon the gift of patience within me through my children. I can't reassign past moments or reprioritize yesterday's minutes, but I can choose what I value today and how I spend my time and how I respond to their call. Time and patience are linked, but it's like an upside down kingdom mentality that Jesus taught. Things that matter require the sacrifice of time. In other words, the very thing you hope to reach, attain and have within a day requires you making more time and space for the opportunities God sends for growth. Our instincts say to do as much as we can, the must-dos of life, but what if we have been in managing our investments all wrong? This is something that has been heavy on my heart. I am learning to stop and not only to hear, but to listen, not only to look, but to really see not only to think, but to act on. We can't afford to not make time for the word of God. And in my daily life, I am seeing more clearly the daily drops of rain and rays of sun that are presented before me to nurture the fruit of patience. The poem that I wrote that was connected to this word is, is entitled Patience. Patience is a virtue, a fruit growing on a tree after a season of sun and rain. Droplets and rays come in new ways, taking the form of my child's voice. Play with me, show me, lay with me, hold me, feed me, enfold me, teach me, know me, see me, hear me, free me, be near me, Create with me, laugh with me, pretend with me, run with me, talk with me, cook with me, walk with me, mom, look at me, bear with me, forgive me, share with me, and love me. In time, the fruit that we see reads patience but not without the loving rays and rain sent from the Lord. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. <laughs> okay, I have waterworks right now, so <laughs> bear with me. Thank you so much, Marina. Um, wow, every time you speak, um, it's moving and all of you ladies, I want to thank you so much. I want to take this opportunity to um, let you know that you can, um, those who are watching right now can write their questions in on the Facebook or in um, the chat if you're here with us on Zoom. After I'm done reading, we will have a, Q a, a brief Q&A. Um, I am your last reader of the evening. <laughs> and. Uh, just thinking back to this time, um, it's so moving, even after hearing everyone's 
one's reading as well. You hear the voices when you read, when this, when you receive everything, but then to actually hear your voice reading this to those that are listening, it's even more moving, honestly. We've cried several times. I know I have. E probably cried too, because he's a crier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into that another time. So my scripture is Matthew 25, verse 21. I will be reading from the NIV version. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The summer of 2013 was a rough one. Not only was it hot, but I was clearly being tested spiritually in reference to my education, finances, and my obedience to God's word. I was trying to figure out how I would be able to go to school full time, take care of my two small children on unemployment, and catch up on paying bills. But one day, towards the third month of frustration, I remembered a sermon on tithing. Then that memory led me to new members class on stewardship. I finally came to realize that the two have to work together. I began tithing on purpose. What purpose you may ask? I tithe because I can't afford not to tithe. I have a reward that I seek. But what does this have to do with stewardship? We ought to be good managers or stewards of our time, treasure, and talents. I soon became a good steward of my time by volunteering to help tutor other students at my school. I became a good steward of my talents by joining the drama ministry at my church. I became a good steward of my treasures by setting aside my tithe prior to spending money on anything else. Becoming a good steward blessed me with a 3.9 GPA, an opportunity to write drama skits and a new car career and a career and enough treasure to give an offering on top of the tithe. The blessings didn't stop there. My children became star musicians in our community and were also doing very well academically. They were eager to serve God through their talents everywhere we went. I know that this was the real blessing for my commitment to God. If you are actively serving in your community, please pray about the ways you will further commit to serving God. If you are not actively serving, seek God's direction on how you can serve with your time, talent, and treasure. Model this for your children who will soon seek their rewards from our Father too. Our final scripture in our devotional is praise the Lord for your friend who shares her wisdom with you, helping you to grow wiser from Proverbs 13, verse 20. Before we get to Q&A, I do wanna thank Pastor E. <laughs> Um, if it wasn't for him directing me to Redeemer City to Cities program, I, I, I don't think I would have stepped out on this faith walk <laughs> with, devotion, with the devotionals or even to ask these lovely mamas to join us. I want to thank Eleanor Johnson. A little known fact, she's my mom. <laughs> I want to thank Amparo Cruz, that new mama you heard from. I want to thank Kina Ventura Rosas. We are so thankful for you and Mimi. <laughs> Elizabeth Rodriguez, thank you so much for sharing. She's quiet yet a powerful prayer warrior. You have no idea. <laughs> I want to thank Vanessa Johnson who wasn't able to join us tonight. Those of you who have will receive devotional will read her story. Um, but sh thank you. It was a sacrifice as well for her to be able to join us on this, on this project. I wanna thank Erica. 
Charlotte Mason has changed my life. <laughs> and almost all of us <laughs> that, that are members of Elements Church. Um, if it wasn't for Charlotte Mason, I would not know who my children are as persons. I wanna thank Rakia for sharing. Um, it is not easy having a chronic illness and being a mama. It is not easy having so many demands on your life. Rakia can sing too. <clears throat> and she also has her own podcast that she has as well called Rakia Speaks. So she's a busy mama as well. And I wanna thank Marina. Um, we call them the Mason tribe, right? <laughs> but each and every individual personality blesses us every time we are able to speak to them, love on them, and or even if she shares her stories on Facebook. Um, and we love you and thank you so much. Thank everyone who has joined us. And our Q&A is now open. is now open. So if anyone has any questions, just drop them into, into the chat room. Um, we're trying to be efficient with our time, not keep you guys here any longer than we need to. Um, but while we're waiting, let me just say that, and let me, let me just put my face on it. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be next to you, uh, Sheena. Uh, let, as the pastor of the church, I can't be any, any, any more proud of you guys for sharing the way you did. Um, I, I love it when people kind of step out of their norms or their regular routines to do stuff like this. And so I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. And yeah, I cried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all good. My church knows me as a, as a, a, a person who, who cries every now and then. Um, yeah, so, so. I didn't want to, I didn't want to show off, but here it is. Here it is. Came in uh, last night, yesterday evening, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're going to mail out um, some copies to you guys who participated. And uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's simple and it's beautiful. And I think, you know, sometimes there's simplicity. I mean, there's beauty and simplicity. And just so you can see, um, what it looks like on the inside is, is beautiful, simple and beautiful. And then the back, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna love having it. And thank you for being a part of it. Um, how many times we went back and forth on that uh, on the artwork? <laughs> we went, <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to do. It was just it was just like Sheena, we got to change this, and she'd be like, Hey, how about that? And it was just it was great. It was it's labor of love. Amen. So um, where can people get them? Yeah, that's a good question. We hadn't thought about that. <laughs> we didn't think that far. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> um, um, yes. Yeah, so I, as of right now, we don't have a conduit for that. But you know, people ask, we can mail them out. It's not like it's gonna cost too much money. Um, Ampi asks Amparo. Sorry, Amparo. We're all adults now. Amparo. Uh, <laughs> we'll be able to share physical copies absolutely um that we're going to send you a few we're not going to send you just one or two we'll send you a little batch correct um so that's for sure look, we'll look at mom one. look at mom right thinking about the future already will there be a second edition i don't see why not you know give it some time um, e, that's right along what you said you said listen i wanted to do more of these and yeah we'll absolutely listen as, as i'm as i'm listening to the lady speak i said to myself the guys can do this. Oh goodness, here we go. Right? Eric? <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Uh, can we get a digital copy? Uh, we don't have, I mean, we have a, what do we have as a digital PDF, right? We Is just that, have a PDF um, yeah. right now. It's not posted to, you know, like Amazon or anything like that. Um, but it is definitely uh, available for us to send you the copies yeah, you know, physically. Or if you want the PDF, we can we can share that as well. I wanna apologize. Um, we did a couple of back and forth with proofreading, but 
as we were reading today, there were a few yeah, we typos. Saw we, we're sorry <laughs> about that, but it happened. I apologize for that. Tiff Tiffany <laughs> asked, um, she said, I don't have any questions, just want to thank you for all the beautiful women that shared this evening. Every spoken word and shared scripture resonated with me. Special thanks to Elizabeth who invited me. Amen. This was the booster shot I needed, especially during during these trying times, our God is awesome. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't it like the word Amen. is so applicable right now? Amen. Amen. We're so glad you came. Amen. Amen. Um, everybody's responding to Tiffany there. Can we pick up copies? Uh, yeah, they're in my house. So, you know, you want to come, come, come pick up. I, Erica would be really happy to get that nice little box out of our house. We're, we're always trying to purge. <laughs> So yes, you can just hit hit me up. Um, I, if you don't have my number, get it from Sheena and mm -hmm. or Erica's number, and we'll work it out. Amen. Oh, Randy Mason said, "You ladies rock." He rhymed it. Randy. He it in his head. He said, "You ladies rock." Thank you for sharing your heart. Amen. I, I echo that. That was beautiful. So oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna if there's no other questions comments, um, yeah, I'm gonna let Sheena close us out. Let me get out of the way. All right. Um, let's thank God for this wonderful time together. Um, God, you know what you were doing when you put us all together, God. Um, you knew what you were doing from the inception of the idea of even sending me to Redeemer City to City. You knew what you were doing from going from one ministry project to another <laughs> at the last minute because I finally understood what it is that you wanted us to do, God. You want us to come together, not in our own separate silos and cubby holes. And yes, we come from different churches here within the devotional, but we all wanna edify your word. We wanna edify the purposes that you have for mamas, God. And just hearing the thank yous and the appreciation and it's, it's really towards you, God, and what you've created in us. And we thank you for using us as that and also for us being good stewards of our time and listening to you and trusting and obeying and, and really following through on the things that you pass upon us and where all we have to do is say yes to what you ask us to do. Let the Holy Spirit continue to guide us, God, and let the Holy Spirit continue to pour into us and overflow so we can overflow to other mamas and the children that we, we speak with and interact with every day. We pray for the teachers, we pray for the dads as well, and we pray for our children, and we pray for our mamas. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless everyone. Thank you for hanging out with us.